I mean, my work has always been sociological in nature and, and at the same time really intimate with the subjects and kind of a function of intimate access or a relationship with the subjects. And um, I'm always interested in what individuals or actions or kind of um, groups of people, what whatever is in the picture, what that says about our culture. So a lot of times it's in my photography, it's not necessarily the ultimate portrait of that person. It's more that person in a moment that reveals our, our, our culture or our cultural values. And so I think I've just, that's kind of where I come from. So I'm always both at the same time, like interacting with you as an individual and then also kind of thinking on it in, in a bigger picture about what does that mean for our society. And, it has, it's not a conflict for me because my work, although sometimes comments on society and sometimes is a critical approach, is not in general critical of the person or the subject, but more critical of the kind of cultural context. And so in a way I want subjects or characters who you can relate to and empathize with, but then also see that predicament that comes from the culture. I did photography. Um, I actually studied film in college as well, but I kind of failed as a filmmaker. I couldn't get grants for any films. I got rejected from many different film schools. And my husband um, always said, you know, do your photography, that's where your talent is, and through that you'll get to do anything. And in 2004, on the back of this book I did called Girl Culture, um, HBO gave me the opportunity to direct my first film. My, so my photography has always been about storytelling and often st storytelling both in a single image and also in a sequence of images and how that builds in a sequence with text, captions and first person interviews. And I've always done first person interviews even when I was in college. So I was always interested in the narrative but film was an opportunity to really take the narrative to a deeper level and also to bring the voice of the subjects into a more immediate and direct kind of forum. So I was interested in that, but that was also the biggest challenge to me. And I think with The Queen of Versailles, it's the first film I've done that brings kind of the aesthetic quality of my photography to film and also the sociological perspective to the film. And in a way is, is the first narrative that I've built too. Um, Thin, which was a film I did about eating disorders, had a narrative, but it was something that evolved very organically while I was there, and I feel like my editor kind of pulled it out, and it was obvious, and there it was. This one was just a much um, more difficult edit. It was more difficult to figure out the narrative, figure out how to tell the story, and so um, I... Um, it, w it was a more conscious process on my part. I actually did a paper edit and really kind of um, built it in a different way. Thin was a completely cinema verite film and in Queen of Versailles there was a lot of really strong verite footage but it was hard to understand without the context of the interview thread because things are really not going very well, for example, for the Seagulls, and they're under tons of financial strain, and they're trying to cut back, and um, then Jackie goes to Walmart at Christmas and buys a ton of stuff. So like, the verite was often confusing, and in a way it needed the spine, the interview spine, to tell the story. And same with David, especially, his most revealing moments came in the interviews, not the verite. Um, and so it just took me a while to figure out how to kind of build that story and take out the repetition. And well, there are a lot of photographs. I did a photo essay about the seagulls also, and a lot of the photos play in the film. And then there's also a lot of photographs of Jackie when she was little and family members and places that are important. So the photography um, does play an important role. And then the other thing that plays an important role is their representation of themselves, that they, Jackie and David, one of the things that appealed to me about their environment is it's covered with portraits of themselves, both photographic and paintings, in a way that is almost like royalty, like the harks back to commissioning artists to do portraits of yourself. And so they have, there's a huge painting of David in the living room 
and um, and Jackie was a beauty queen, and they're pictures of her beauty queen background all over the house. And they're framed in these kind of beautiful gilded frames that, that are everywhere. And every time I went to the house, they would be in a different place. And by the end, I realized that this hallway and this way that they represent themselves was really important to the film. And so I got a dolly and actually dolly tracked down the hallway. And that's part of the opening. And you kind of go between their representations of themselves and their in the beginning, kind of the fantasy life they lead on a boat, on a private jet. I was really interested in the way pictures function in their world, and and especially because they're in control of those images, and like they would always do this Christmas card. And that was one of the things that got me interested in them in the first place, is Jackie showed me this Christmas card of her six children, um, or no, her seven children, on the, on the plane of their, on the stairs of their private jet. And the Christmas card, I'm just always interested in that, the way people kind of present themselves to their friends. And um, so that was an important part of it. Um, and what I did, what, what actually came out of the Sundance Lab and, and the person who helped me with this was Joe Beanie, um, who has cut many of Werner Herzog films. And we were working on what should the beginning of the film be? And the beginning of the film needs to kind of have um, a sense of foreshadowing and maybe a mystery that you don't find out till later. And what we ended up finding was an outtake from the first interview where I'm photographing David and Jackie and my DP is rolling on it. I didn't even remember that that existed. And you see Jackie posing for the camera and then you see what's behind the pose. And for me, it spoke to the question of representation and also when is she posing, when is she real? And there's an arc in the film where in the beginning, She's hair and makeup are beautiful and clothing is styled and by the end I'm filming her getting Botox and lasered and s layers of skin are coming off her face and in the last scene she has no makeup on and she's barefoot and she's just completely present and herself in front of the camera. And, um, and the other thing that the opening sequence speaks to is my relationship with them. I started out photographing Jackie, and Jackie's a model, and she poses. And so um, it spoke to you know, both Jackie's relationship to the camera, my relationship to them, and then was kind of something that could unfold in the movie.